Welcome to the Dice Tower Daily Chat. I'm your host, Roy, and with me today is Tony McCree from Rolling Dice and Taking Names. What's going on, man? Nothing. That's why I'm here tonight. I'm happy to be here. Appreciate you giving <laughs> me the invite, man. This is oh, this is stressful. I'm not I'm not like the well practiced Marty at these things. I'm just, you know, the other guy. I thought Marty was the other guy. What? <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, it's me. It's all me. Mr. Bonacore gave me that title, and I wear that with honor. I am happy to have <laughs> that, that symbol on me for the podcast. Just, oh, man. But thank you for having me on, man. You doing all right? You doing well? You doing? You, are, you, are you safe? I'm, I'm being safe. I'm having a good time. And, you know, Flor- Florida's interesting, but uh, we're, we're trying to make things happen down here. We're trying to make things happen. Uh, especially now, you know, uh, uh, we hate to bring bad news in, but I know you're you're in a zone that just keeps growing. You know, numbers keep changing, <laughs> but, but what's not? You know, that's okay. Just uh, the family's safe. Everybody's good. Mm-hmm. All right, family's doing well. Okay. Well, you know, being who I am and the company I work for, I always want to check on safety. You feeling? Are you feeling good? Do I need to make sure you're, you're in a safe place? Well, the, the, the power's still on. Our air conditioner's okay. working, so that's good. I used to always pretend because I used to live up in North Carolina near where y'all were, and you work for like Duke Power, right? Yes. yes so I used to always pretend Energy. it used to lessen the sting a little bit if I'm like I'm helping Tony out a little bit by uh, sending in my pay or my my bill this week, you know? <laughs> uh, absolutely, and you know, for in current. I'm trying. I'm amazed at this studio. What do they have you in Dice Tower down there, like in the janitorial closet or something? I am for quite doing literally in the closet, but I'm at my house, so I'm oh, not, like, okay. in the studio. Oh, okay. I thought maybe Tom said, "You know what, Roy? You go over here. This this is where we keep some of the games we don't get to anymore. You know, the the <laughs> what? closet of shame. You know, whatever. So, These are all high quality games. High quality games." I agree, but I mean, how often does Twilight Imperium get on the on the table? However, I do see Gizmos and Fallout behind you, and one of my favorite, uh, I think that's Champions of Midgard back mm-hmm. there. So, yes, those are all yours. And what is that face behind you, that ye- yellow oh. thing? You don't know what this is from? It's from Cthulhu Wars. It's the, uh, oh. I-, I can't say his name because, you know, you're not supposed to say his name, but the King in Yellow. Okay, well, you know, Cthulhu is Marty. That's all Marty, you know, mm-hmm. my, my co-host. He and Vanessa are all into that. I mean, I don't know if you heard, but they've done like uh, 15 hours of with uh, Vanessa's brother in Mississippi. They've done the Eldritch campaigns. Oh, that's awesome. I know. And they've set up all these cameras and they're running two board games side mm. by side. So the best thing I've got going on in my pandemic house is when I, when my wife goes, okay, we'll go get the rolling light. I'm like, okay, baby, I can do that. <laughs> So if people don't know what rolling dice and taking names is, could you uh, give people a little bit of an introduction about what you do in board game media? We are a podcast, very seldom video, obviously. Look at this. This is, this is not video <laughs> worthy here. And we have been going on for almost seven years now. We started, uh, I believe it was December of 2013, 2014, somewhere, I, all the years. I, I'm an old man. It just passed it on by. The years have gone on. But we just celebrated our 200th episode. Uh, as of today, we released number 201. And we've been doing uh, discussions. We're not, uh, I kid Marty about saying, hey, we're doing reviews. No. We do discussions. I don't feel like I can say, hey, this is good. This is great. I'm going to tell you just basically what makes it feel good to me. And that's what we're doing. We're doing those audio podcasts. We spend the first 15, 20, sometimes, unfortunately, 30 minutes for our listeners doing banter back and forth, talking about things that really don't have anything to do about board games, such as, uh, for some odd reason, we've gotten on Switch games. Do you have a Switch? Yes. Oh, I'm at the top of um, Hyrule Castle right now, getting ready to oh, go nice. into the inner sanctum. I'm Listen, getting ready to finish Breath of the Wild. How many? How many of the beasts are there? Are there three or are there four? I know I four. killed. I killed three of them, mm-hmm. and then my kids got a hold of my switch and deleted my save file. Ooh. Um, so, <laughs> so I, I I keep playing like the first starter area over again, but I can't find like the time to like go back and go through it. But that game is amazing. It is. And it, the, the open world concept, that sandbox. And you're just like, oh, man. And I, I, that's why I keep putting off going to do the final boss battle is because I don't want the exploration to end. Even though I keep thinking I've seen it all. And then I go to another place. And I'm like, well, I've never been there. 
<laughs> what is this? You know, and, and trying to track it down and, and then upgrade the armor. I feel like mm-hmm. just like playing a role playing game. Yeah. You know? I always said, like, when I played Skyrim, I could never do, like, the main quest. Because I kept always finding, like, nooks and crannies with, like, different things to explore in it. So I never got anything done. And I feel like when they made that game, they took Zelda and Skyrim and, like, smashed it together. And and made just something that was just so much better than both, I think. In my personal opinion. Uh, And I will share your personal opinion with you, if I may. So sure. that we can agree on that. Now, I've never gotten Skyrim, even though it was on sale recently. And Marty had to explain to me, what is it? I took an arrow to the knee. Yeah. I never heard that. I, that's just how out of touch you, I am with these you, things. You missed that meme? <laughs> like, there was, there was, it was a meme for constantly. a while all the time. You're like, the internet? I, I what's this internet memes. thing? Yeah, what is it? Hey, when I was in school back at NC State, we had just gotten a network, okay? We were still doing Pascal. We were on servers that were hooked up only six computers, man. We had just gotten a 300 bald modem so we could look in the library, and we thought that was amazing that we were able to do that stuff. Yeah, I'm old. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not trying to rub it in or anything. But yeah. Nah, nah. Everybody, make sure to ask us tons of questions, and we will uh, field some of those and see what's going on. I do see that uh, Kabuki Kid here asks, what goes with moon pies? Barley pop? RC Cola. That's that's the classic answer, right? That's the classic answer. But my daughter, who um, is out in um, Oklahoma, uh, she was attending school out there. She sent me a picture recently of mint-flavored moon pies. Oh, weird. I, what do you mean weird? Think, it's chocolate mint. Think of a Girl Scout. I've just never cookie. had one. It sounds good, though. I know. Me too. So she's going to try to box them up and ship them to me, and hopefully it'll make them to me without being one big congealed molten mess. I do have a question. <laughs> What's your opinion of moon pies with cheer wine? I'm good with it. It's it's go. a moon pie. Come on. I mean, you know, as always, you know, when I usually start something, the, the wife, right before we started, we, we've got homemade chocolate chip cookies ready to go right here. <laughs> oh. Oh, so good. So good. If Ignacy's mm. watching, he's going to like jump through the screen at you. If he's up, if he's up right now, he's not sleeping well. And hopefully he's designing <laughs> something for all of us to share. Maybe he's trying to like find some uh, midnight snacks of some cookies, you know. That's exactly That's right. Now, I, I have a question for you about that. Have you found that during this time, have you found yourself playing a lot more um, like um, – Online game, not online games, games, but just like apps. Like I'm constantly, I've always been a, a fan of Ascension, mm-hmm. the, the Ascension app. I have all the expansions, all that. I'm, I'm really excited that we're going to have um, Justin on to talk about Ascension tactics in a Rolling Dice episode. I think it's number two hundred two. We've got it planned out, so he's yes. coming on to talk about that. And I'm an Ascension. Thanks to my good buddy, you know Dan Patrice. You know who he is. Yeah. Um, Deke All Stars. He got me hooked on this. So I'm constantly on my uh, iPad playing Ascension or Twilight, Twilight Struggle um, with uh, another buddy of ours, uh, Mark Kell, uh, with Mega Moose Con and all that. But, I know Mark. You know, I'm, you know Mark. You, <laughs> you, you actually invited Mark up for some gaming. Yeah, he's, we know how he is. But, he, um, he actually you, did a, uh, we did a werewolf game for over Skype recently. So he joined in with that. So that was pretty fun. Mark Kell. Uh, well, you know my opinion on social deduction games. <laughs> I know it's not very, <laughs> not very high. <laughs> but uh, that's why. I, do you find yourself on, on more apps now, um, trying to do that? I, I haven't really been playing a lot of like iPad apps or things like that. But one thing that I have done is so we had to start learning how to use Tabletop Simulator. I had messed mm-hmm. with Tabletop Simulator back in the day um, when it first came out, and I'm like, oh, this is cool. You can play stuff, but it it never really like. It never really felt the same as playing like a real board game. I thought the technology was cool, but now that it's kind of like a requirement um, and I had to learn it for work because we did some streams um, over Tabletop Simulator and stuff like that. And I actually got to thinking, I was like, man, it'd be really awesome to take like prototypes and put them on there. So I actually have done a little bit of that and like played with a bunch of different people from all over the place. So it's been really fun messing with Tabletop Simulator, which I probably wouldn't have done at all if we weren't having to play things remote, you know? Oh, I completely agree with you. And now between table, was it Tabletopia versus mm-hmm. Tabletop Simulator? Tabletopia has the rule set built in. It's actually mm-hmm. the game, right? Yeah. So I find myself tending to want to not have to do the rules. You know what I mean? I let, let, the, let the machine tell me the rules and make sure I do everything right versus, 
oh, good gosh, I got to do the rules <laughs> on Tabletop Simulator, you know? But I will say what was really cool about this is we got to try out, you know, um, Undaunted North Africa. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we were just like, oh man, this is this is nice to get on there with David Thompson, you know, one of the designers, and he walked us through it. It was a good way for us to be able to play a game before it came out and get talk about it, you know. Mm-hmm. And, and Nor- Undaunted Normandy, did you ever get to play that one? A BGG Award winner, war game. <laughs> so funny story. Um, I'm, I'm all ears. Boy. <laughs> just I'm all ears. just recently, um, uh, Jason was trying to get me to play Undaunted Normandy with him. <laughs> And uh, I'm not a big fan of, like, actual real-world war themes. I love, like, abstract fantasy combat or space combat. But he really wanted to play it with me. And I uh, I passed on the opportunity and ended up playing something else instead. But uh, I recently had an opportunity to play, and I didn't. But uh, I've, I've heard it's really good. So, Well, you always talked about, you know, when we'd get together at cons, just the two-player aspect. I mean, you mm-hmm. love Marvel Champions. Oh, right? for sure. So here's a card game and i can understand that i don't really want to play war i'd rather play something fantasy but here you know you have the marvel champions and you're playing the cards kind of like moving the pieces in undaunted you're sitting there moving the pieces and you've got to do it's very deck building very deck building which i know if i'm not mistaken is one of your favorites yeah i enjoy that stuff so well you enjoy all games let's be honest (laughs) by the way kudos to your job i don't know if people realize this just the man behind the man the man who makes Tom look good on editing. The man who can string it all together. Don't look at it. Don't look away <laughs> with the modesty. I mean, come on. You know, you got to give you kudos here, dude. Awesome. I try. I try. What do you um, mean you try? You <laughs> succeed. There's, there's a few videos, you know. I've been working at, we're working a ton on uh, doing all our Dice Tower Summer Spectacular stuff. So we're stringing all that together. And we've got, we've got plans, man. There's definitely a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes that people don't know about. Of course. I mean, what else are you going to do? There is no Dice Tower Con this year. Exactly. But we're not doing a, a con, like a virtual con. We're doing a, let's create a whole bunch of content, you know, which is which is. Fun. Uh, I see what you did there. Con, content. Okay. There I'm go. good with that. There you go. Um, here's the important question here. Wayne there says, go. let's start, take, let's, ah, let's spend some time talking about lawnmowers. So what is this oh, whole yes. lawnmower thing and rolling dice taking names? And why are you guys so intertwined with uh, lawn maintenance? <laughs> <laughs> so a year, or actually, has it been a year? It's almost been two years. Yeah, two years ago, I moved. Marty and I lived about 15 minutes away. And life changes. Kids move out someday. That will happen for you. Okay. You got some a few years on, for me, uh, to do. And so I decided I would change where I lived. We were no longer, uh, we were the old people in the neighborhood. It was the get off my lawn guy. Okay. (laughs) So this was a young neighborhood, great schools. So we decided we would move and get closer to where I work. And when we did that, I suddenly got a lawn that required a lot, a lot of mowing that a push mower could no longer have. I had you know, three quarters of an acre in my old house, but it was mostly woods. And you understand this. And now I've moved into three quarters of an acre and it's all long. Mm-hmm. So for some odd reason, I got on a discussion, the banter of talking about my plight and trying to find a lawnmower. Mm-hmm. And which got Marty, who has a zero term mower. We talked about that. And for some odd reason, that just kind of, it was fun. <laughs> uh, I mean, I have a Troy built um, flex which allows me to take, it has the engine, but I can put uh, different uh, contraptions on it, the mower, the blower, the pressure washer, the um, snow blower, if I ever were to order it and need it. I don't need What's it. What's snow? I don't remember snow. No, I'm just kidding. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> um, and so we, we talk about that. But, you know, today it is now time, if you haven't done so, it's time to get down another layer of pre-emergent. You don't want those weeds cropping up, people. <laughs> you got you got to stay on top of it. Now, do you now what's your lawn mower of preference, or do you have a lawn to mow? It's so funny because, like in Miami, it's very like homestead Miami. Like it's very condensed, mm-hmm. so there's much less yard than there is in North Carolina. So I had like a push mower because um, the house we came from, I had a decent amount of lawn. But now all I have is like a tiny little section like i have a sliding glass back door and then there's like a little fenced off section because we live in a condo and there's just this tiny little strip that i'm responsible for mowing so i have a whole like 
push mower that I use and it takes like like literally like 15 no probably like 10 minutes or less to mow this tiny little strip of land um but I I, I have the lawnmower because I have a lawnmower and like weed eater and all the stuff I had from my old house I brought mm-hmm. it down here with me so I'm prepared but I don't have a zero turn mower because it would just be like turn done Fun. <laughs> yeah I'm surprised you haven't downsized to just a very large weed eater I know yeah. well I had it but why would I why would I buy more if I already have the thing and I've got a nice yeah, I agree storage room that i can throw it in so it's fine it's fine well is your weed eater gas powered or electric? it's electric see i just bought one of those and let me say why did it take me so long <laughs> oh my i mean that's just so much easier to pop that battery on take it out do some quick edging i'm done doesn't have all the power i need for edging but that's okay i can <laughs> deal with that but, but this is one of those things that you gotta you gotta work through. But uh, so lawnmowers, yeah, that's one of our little banter things. Is, and we actually were told stop talking about it. So we we kind of put it on the lowdown. But we do always ask, what is your brand of lawnmower? Now you said you have one. What kind is it? Craftsman. Am I supposed to know the brand? I got it at Lowe's. Yes. I don't know. Listen, you I'm not. I'm not a lawnmower connoisseur like you guys are. I just. Is it green? Is it green? No, it's it's black. That's, okay, okay, that's know. fine. Well, I'll let you get away with it. That's all right. Another thing we always talk about. I'll send is you food. pictures. You can tell me the brand and type and how much horsepower it has and all that. You know. Well, Lowe's, you know, they've gone and bought the Craftsman name, so we'll just say <laughs> you stencil Craftsman on it. Um, so another thing, another thing we always talk about is food. Now, are you a grill man? Uh, I had a grill in North Carolina, but I don't have one here, so. It doesn't mean you're not a grill man. You could easily I do like, this. I mean, I like even grill indoor grill. I just don't currently have one. So. Okay. Um, do you have your air fryer? Your ninja? The, I have the a George ninja? Foreman. <laughs> Knock that, out the fat. That's it. There you go. So we talk about grilling and, and the various spices you can add to food. Um, <laughs> uh, how do you, you know, rub, get it all going? And I'm sorry if I'm offending any um, vegetarians here, but that's eh, something, you know. That we're dealing with is you how just do you just pretend like it's impossible burgers, you know, it's fine. that's it. Try those, you know, salmon burgers are awesome. <laughs> um, what, how, what kind of uh, spices do you put on our pod pledge channel? Um, we've in Slack, we, well, that's probably the biggest topic is grilling and food. Don't ask me why it just is. <laughs> if we don't talk board games, we talk the important stuff. Kit Parker's in the chat. Oh, snap, oh, Kent Parker. Oh, Kent Parker. Oh, okay, Kent. Oh, another, welcome. Another Carolina guy there. Uh, um, Kent, Kent, go take care of the babies. Come on. <laughs> you, need to go, you need to go get ready for bed. <laughs> Kent asks, uh, Roy, how did the War of the Ring with the fancy version go? So Ooh, last I night, saw those. I saw last those night, pictures, Last night, I, uh, I haven't played War of the Ring. I hadn't played War of the Ring Collector's Edition and I knew uh, Jason Levine had one. So literally, as soon as I got off work, I drove all the way up to Fort Lauderdale, where he lives, which is like an hour drive. My family's out of town. They're visiting uh, my, uh, my her family up in North Carolina currently. So she's, hey, closer to you guys. Um, but so I drove up there and uh, we played. I helped him set it up and we played the collector's edition of War of the Ring, which is actually first edition, which is a little bit different than second edition that I've played. Um, but yeah, it's awesome. Like it comes in that giant wooden box and everything's already painted and stuff. I really enjoyed it, but after playing it, I'm like, this is pretty much the same game as the game I have. Like I had this huge envy of like this, like $1,500 game that I was never going to have. And after playing it, I'm like, it's pretty much the same game, you know? So I'm really happy with the Lord of the War of the Ring that I have. So I have no need to spend ridiculous amounts of money on this fancy version but i'll just slowly have to paint all those tiny little miniatures myself you know that's so you know where we talked about you know that peaceful time which i get with lawn mowing Mm -hmm. there's your peaceful time there's that reflection time Mm -hmm. that painting miniatures i found when we were doing that for the privateer press uh what war machine Mm -hmm. that painting those miniatures it was very relaxing very soothing i i heard that y'all actually got a chance to play the war of the ring game I did not. I know that. Oh, was, just Marty uh, did. Marty got his. Well, he, Nate Bivens. Um, this epic two-player game that y'all been talking about forever. He left you out on it. What? Yes. I was gone. I was on vacation. 
He waited till you were on vacation? Marty, come he on. He always does that. I, I mean, <laughs> I was gone. I'm surprised I was able to get back into the country, to be honest with you. But anyway, yes, he played it then. So he learned the game so that he could then later teach me. So he, he learned mm. so that he can make it a more enjoyable experience than me sitting there and watching him slog through the rule book. That's, that's I, the kind of bud he is. <laughs> I definitely love love that game. Like, I don't know. It's it's very thematic. And if you like Lord of the Rings, which I know you guys do, um, mm-hmm. it's definitely a it, it gives you that feel of like the books, but you don't have to follow like a certain path. You can do diff- things differently. You know, it's a lot of fun. Yes. Uh, let's see. What was it? Uh, Journeys to Middle Earth. I won't get that back on the table. I want to get the LCG back on the table someday, even though I have it, I think, on the Switch. I think I have it on Steam now. I think I think I got it on all the applications. I just never get to play it. When I had Marty on my podcast last time, we talked a lot about the uh, the TCG from back in the day. <laughs> oh, so good. So good. It was. Just that whole concept. The multiplayer was top notch. You know, and that's what got us into this. Mm-hmm. So from a board gaming standpoint. Well, that's that's it. No, and I also saw today that you had something in your hands. And then again, uh, as I look on occasionally on Facebook, as you know, I don't do very often. Um, <laughs> there was a um, you had a picture of a new game that came out at Target. Uh, oh, what the, was that? Gloomhaven Jaws the Lion. Fun mm-hmm. fact. Fun fact about that uh, picture. I technically took it like I took that picture, literally like three weeks ago, <laughs> but I didn't post it until today. So. Like, that came into the studio, like, forever ago. Um, And sad thing is that Mike and Tom have been playing it a lot, but I haven't gotten as much of a chance to play it. But it seems like it's really cool. It's basically Gloomhaven, but they've made it where it's like, this is like the intro version to Gloomhaven. Mm -hmm. And the best part about it is everybody who has Gloomhaven is like, oh, it takes a lot to set up and get all the map tiles just right and have everything. This has like a storybook, sort of like a lot of the Plaid Hat games does, but it's a storybook where you can play on the map itself. So you get the cool card combat, you get all new characters, but it also comes with a board. Um, Matt and Tom, or not Matt, uh, Mike and Tom both both put out glowing reviews of of, uh, the game and how much it's easier to get into, you know. So I'm excited to try it out more. We were able to get a preview copy as well, and um, so Marty and I played played it. Another gentleman, I don't know if you know, uh, another guy you may know, Bert from our area, uh, he sat down with us, and we were playing it because the uh, episode that released today um, on June the 23rd, well, 201, we have Isaac on. I, we interviewed mm. Isaac, and nice. he um, was talking about what it took to get it to Target, where he came up with the whole idea of Gloomhaven, how he developed it, his history behind board gaming. Uh, excellent interview. Isaac, uh, for those who've never heard him speak, he's very, he articulates well beyond what I do, of course. <laughs> and he was just, he was just giving us a lot of good information and it's good, uh, stuff as to why they wanted to go to target, mm-hmm. you know, try to help them build that base. Mm-hmm. And I thought, I told him, I said, well, Isaac, I'm going to go over to target and help sell this thing. I'm going to stand out there and help direct people to it. It's sold out everywhere. Sold out everywhere. <laughs> so, so much for that, you know. I went. I went to Target. Uh, the first day was on sale, and they had a few copies there. I actually picked up one for Mike because one copy came in the studio. He wanted his own copy. Um, mm. But I was like, should we? Should I buy more of the, like? Who else in in our game group is gonna want this? Because it might not be here if I walk away, you know. And it's not. <laughs> it's pretty much. They're probably all gone. All the ones that I saw. But I left them on the shelf for whoever would be excited about buying them. So. So it's kind of like toilet paper, you know, you could have hoarded it, but you didn't. You were a nice guy. Thank you. <laughs> I thought you know about I thought about getting my own copy of it, but I have the full version of Gloomhaven right here that I haven't like I've played Gloomhaven several times, but I haven't cracked into my own copy and I'm like I just need to play that. Like it'll take it'll take up a lot of table space and I won't have the cool book. I there's a lot of outcry now for uh him to make books for everything, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, so once again, you and I we connected. I've got my big copy of Gloomhaven, not even open. I've got my broken token insert, not even put together. There's no reason to put something together if it's not going to be able to go in the box because the box isn't open. Ah, one of these days. One of these days I'll get to do it. I I thought about cracking open and soloing it so many times, but Mm -hmm. I just keep keep going back to Marvel Champions. Oh, I can understand that. Now, of the packs, if I were to... 
I asked this question on our podcast tomorrow. I said, so Marty, if I were to invest in the next pack, mm -hmm. what would you get? And you posted recently, and, and you've, you've swayed me here. I haven't bought any packs yet. And he's like, well, do you want more villains? You want more? I'm like, no, tell me what to buy. Don't sit here and make me try to make a decision. Mm -hmm. You liked the Mr. Strange. Mr. Strange, is that right? Yeah. No. Doctor yeah. Strange? Doctor Strange. Mr. Strange. What the? I, it's Mr. Yeah, Fantastic I think, Doctor I think, Strange. I think if, if I was going to rank... Like all of the stuff to buy, um, Doctor Strange currently isn't out in America yet. For some reason, Fantasy Flight released their stuff in the UK before they released mm. it in America. So I ordered it from a store in the UK and played ridiculous shipping for them to ship it over. Um, but I got it a little bit earlier. But it should be coming out like the beginning of next month. Okay. Um, but honestly, have you played the villains that you have a whole bunch already? The answer would be no. Yeah, I would say I would say Doctor Strange. I would probably go like I'd buy Doctor Strange, or and then especially since you haven't played the current villains a ton. But then one of the next ones I'd get would be the Green Goblin scenario, just because it's really good. I love the um, the the mutant mutagenic formula scenario in there. I think it's probably my favorite villain to fight against because it's got a okay. lot of minions and Green Goblin is just rough and it's 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 just fun, you know. Now, when we saw this game coming out, it was what, Gen Con last year, right? Mm -hmm. And we were all saying, oh, great, another Marvel card game. Yay, you know? It's pretty right. funny because I was pretty cold on it at first because I, right. I love the Arkham Horror LCG. And I felt mm -hmm. like this wasn't, as far as like gameplay mechanics and the story and stuff, I didn't feel like Marvel Champions was as good of a game. But... The fact that that's a campaign and the ease of just getting it, because that's just two decks. I throw this deck out, I throw that deck out, and I can just play. The fact that I can play the game so quickly, especially solo, or even with two people, like, it's really turned me around on Champions. And, and that's what I was saying. It's going to be like one of those things where everybody's kind of, ah, and, then, and then all of a sudden, boom, you can't get it. You know? Right. It's hard to get. Um, so I guess everybody who was cold, who said, eh, mm -hmm. They like it. They love it. I mean, I, I enjoy the the game, and I like the mechanic of you know having to discard cards. Anytime when you have a hard decision, that's a, that's a seller for me. I think I think it's interesting too, because uh, like with with the Lord of the Rings LCG and like all these other LCGs, it felt like there was very much a order that you should buy stuff in. And this because each of the hero packs is like a, a like a thing. Like you can pop open Doctor Strange, you can pop open Cop Captain America and just play with it straight out of the pack. You don't have to do any deck building. Of course you can once you play it or like once you want to, you can switch stuff up and mix up however you want to, but you don't have to do deck building out of out of the right off the bat and the bad guy stuff you can pretty much just pop it open and play with it. So it makes it so you can kind of buy the stuff in any order that you want. So it's kind of like mm -hmm. if you see a character you think is cool, like grab that you know it it's not like you have to get this thing in the cycle and then that story follows this thing and you got to buy that next because there's a big problem because i really like the arkham horror lcg too but sometimes that one pack is out of stock in, in mm. the next thing and i keep like going back and looking it's like oh it's in stock let me grab one. Oh well the next one after that's out of stock now it's like okay i played one now i gotta wait for the other one to come back in stock you know it's kind of interesting and which goes back to the Lord of the Rings living card game. When I would purchase it, it would be like, okay, which ones do I want? Mm -hmm. And then eventually I just stopped buying them because I wasn't playing them. And now mm -hmm. I'm going back saying, okay, where was I on the adventure? You know, mm -hmm. where, what and you have where to have the core box because the core box cards go into all the other stuff. And then when you want to play, you got to be like, okay, where's the cards that go into this set? The cool thing about Marvel Champions is just like, there's the bad guy. Let's fight him. You know, so. exactly. Absolutely. So that's one of those. That's another holdup. I will never get rid of my Lord. Uh, I did get rid of my TCG, but I will not get rid of my living card game. I did ask Marty when he was on uh, my podcast, but uh, what what factions did you play in the Lord of the Rings TCG? Um, in the TCG, I was always the Urukai. Yes. For my, uh, yeah. I was Urukai too. I always felt the goblins cheated, and I don't like that. <laughs> you know, they the spam too storm. many characters out. <laughs> yeah, the goblins storm. Uh, I wasn't real happy with that one, but I did enjoy playing the Urukai. Mm -hmm. And then as the other sets came out, I tried the Easterlings, I believe. Mm -hmm. But I, 
that was way late, and so I didn't really, you know, Did you play on study. Fellowship side? On the Fellowship side, I was heavy on the Elves. Gotcha. Before they did the um, nerf bat to the mirror thing where you could constantly regenerate on the mirror. There was a card. And God, Roy. Gladrail's mirror or something like that. Yes. And there was a way that you could do that and you could constantly, you know, cycle through the deck or do something mm. that allowed you to get what you needed out. Mm. And then they nerfed that. And then I said, okay, fine. I remember trying to run a heavy um, boar mirror deck at one time. So I, I always found it satisfying I played dwarves. I always find it satisfying just like putting a whole bunch of axes on Gimli. Like, how many axes can this guy carry? It's just like, throw mm-hmm. an axe over here, kill that a goblin. Throw an axe over there, kill it. I don't know. It was just fun. It was a great game. Loved it. You know, <clears throat> Marty has two starters. He's like, someday we're going to sit down, and I don't know if we're going to stream it or whatever, but play it again. But That'd before be awesome. we do, we're going to have to re- learn the rules again, <laughs> other than pay you know, r- learn the nine steps, you know, the, follow the path, all that stuff. It's been forever. I'm like, oh, man, you're going to hurt me. <laughs> all right. Uh, Goofy asks a really important question here. What are moon pies? So basically, you know, we get this all the time. Wagon wheels, uh, you know, what are they? Um, but basically they're, think of them as s'mores, but the it's marshmallow with two graham cracker marshmallow stuff between two graham crackers that are covered in chocolate versus, you know, the reverse of two graham crackers with chocolate and marshmallow in the center. So that is a moon pie. And what do you know what caused all the moon pie stuff for us? Do you do you remember this by chance? It was a while ago. It was at a BGG con. And we made your boss real happy with us. So we I don't, were at BGG. Yeah. I don't remember the exact 100% story. I know you guys used to hand them out all the time. Yes. So the first time we handed them out is when your boss, Tom, said, you know, he's inviting all the network up. Mm-hmm. And by the way, we're Rolling Dice Team. He's a member of the Dice Tower Network. <laughs> and got to get that in there. Um, and he said, um, come on up. So Marty was like, you know, and just sitting up there talking, we need to do something. And I said, okay, what do you want to do? He says, I don't know. What, what's something we can do? What's something about where we're from, where we're at? And he said, you know, you always take something to a guest. When someone has you or you go to a house, you take take a dessert, you take a you know dip, something to drink. He said, you know what would be fun? Is if we would take a whole bunch of moon pies and RC colas and give those out at BGG Con. So Tom calls us up on stage. Mm-hmm. And Marty's going through the introduction, you know, saying who we are. And he says, but you know what? Instead of hearing about us, we're here to give y'all stuff. And so I stand up He and he goes, Tom, Eric, we want to say, here are two RC colas and two moon pies for you gentlemen to enjoy while we're here. And how about everybody get moon pies? And so I start flinging at BGG Con moon pies, <laughs> up close to 48 moon pies, double deckers. Because we had gone to Sam's, uh, big box store, wholesale s- s- place, and we are throwing these things. I got Frisbees going, you know, mm-hmm. pinging the crowd with these moon pies. And that's what started it. So from then on, whenever Tom would have us up, we would throw out moon pies until he said no. And he was just says, you're just creating a lot of confusion. We understood that, and we were going to stop it. <laughs> he, he says, I appreciate what y'all are doing. It's great. But, you know, let's keep this thing moving. So you and we were like, we understand. So not a problem. But every time at a con, if you see us, we generally have moon pies in our backpack. And so then we give them out. But that's what started it all. BGG con on the Dice Tower show. And we were flinging them at people. I'm glad nobody got hurt. <laughs> and it was, it was fun. It was, it was different. I mean, I threw some to the Game Boy Geek. I mean, he was operating a camera. I'm surprised I didn't take a camera out or something like that. It was it was great. Um. I actually had, I had met you guys at a con, like, I, it might have even been before I started doing board game media, but maybe it was right around that time when I started doing my little podcast. Um, was rested. it at Mace? I, yeah, I think so. And mm-hmm. um, I had come up and said stuff about Rolling Dice Taking Names, and Marty had given me a moon pie, and I, like, had it in my game room for, like, years. <laughs> <laughs> like, I found it, and I'm like, I think I got this literally, like, years ago. <laughs> It was still good, too. <laughs> Those things never expire. Never, they're like Twinkies. They're, they're <laughs> a solid Twinkie, and 
put them in the microwave for a few seconds. They really, really good. Just got to make sure the chocolate doesn't melt too much. Kent says the babies are in bed. Re- well, it's about time. <laughs> keep, keep, them on, keep them on schedule, man. That's the worst thing you can do. Break their schedule. I know. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm trying to find some recent questions. Because we, we, we riffed for quite a while. Okay. Nate says... So, Roy, just, just so you know, that's, that's rolling dice and taking names way. We'll just go and go and go and go. And, and then, oh, crap, we got show notes. I love, I love the, uh, the rabbit trails and, and banter and stuff in podcasts. I, I feel like that's like my favorite part is just the, the talking back and forth and seeing where it leads. Mm-hmm. So what question we got, if we got any? Nathan says, champions versus legendary versus Sentinels of the multiverse. Mm, Have you played all three? Yes, I have. That, that's a that's a rank them, which is something we did with uh, with all of our guest designers. They'll come on. We'll give them three things to rank, kind of like uh, chocolate, vanilla, strawberry. How would you rank those? And uh, I'm not telling you why to rank them, how to rank. I just rank them. What would you do? Um, I'd go chocolate first, then vanilla, then strawberry. If we're talking about why ice cream. Yeah. Why is that? I don't know. Strawberry ice cream seems weird to me, but okay. uh, I, I really like chocolate. And okay, good so too. it's based on what you like. Okay, yeah. very good. So here we are. So we're going to rank those things, and you can come up and let's play the game. <laughs> Tony rank says, them however you want to. Or Marty in chat was saying that you, you can't take off your host hat for a second. You've been hosting. <laughs> it's fine. Um, well, I don't know. I want to hear your. Uh, I want to hear your opinion of these first, and how much you've played them. Okay, so I'm going to rank them by um, how much I've played them. And that's going to be Marvels, Sentinels, and Legendary. Okay, that's just by how I've played them. Played more Marvel. And then Sentinels I've only played on the iPad, in which I was told that's the best way to play it. Because you don't, it's not as fiddly. Not a lot of, yeah, absolutely. And then Legendary, I don't have it on an iPad. I, my daughter really enjoyed it, so I gave it to her, so I no longer have it. And I never really was able to get it back on the table before something else came along. So that's the way I rank it. Now, as far as the system, I think, you know, I would have put Legendary above Marvel previously. But now uh, I'm not answering the question because that's what I'm good at. But it's Marvel, <laughs> then, then Sentinels, and then Legendary based on how much I've played them. Um, for me... Uh... This is pretty easy. I, I was a huge fan of Legendary for a long time. And I love that game. And I played it a ton with my game group. Um, and I have I have basically everything from Marvel Legendary. I'm literally looking at I, I'm looking at an unopened pack of the, the Heroes of Asgard. They haven't even opened yet. Nice. But that's like the brand new one that came out. Well, I think they came out with another one after that. They don't stop. They just keep coming out. Um, but yeah, I have a ton of it. And I really enjoy the game. But... <laughs> Um, I haven't played it as much since I've moved down here because my old game group in North Carolina used to be a really big fan of it. We used to play it a decent amount. I've played it a little bit with the kids, which they're, they're too young. <laughs> it didn't work out very well. Too young, we, yeah. We attempted. Um, but it, 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 I still really enjoy the game, and I'd love to play it at, at a convention here or there um, if I have the time. But uh, I, I've played Marvel Champions constantly. Um, and then the lowest for me is Sentinels of the Multiverse. Um, I played it some when it came out. I had a friend who was really big into it, but I just, I felt like you didn't have a whole lot you could do on your turns and it felt very limiting. And I tried to play it with my wife once and she was not a fan. So, mm-hmm. but, uh, there's a lot of, up, there's a lot of upkeep to it. I enjoyed the solo aspect of it, mm-hmm. but yeah. So for, for me and Marvel champion, I mean, and also back to your point about Marvel champions and being able to just smash it together real quick and pull it apart. Mm-hmm. Legendary. You, you oh yeah, that there's same. a ton of tear down and put together, and I mean that's one of the main things that's kind of pushed Marvel Champions. I just I just think that the combos and the deck building and actually being able to build your deck and actually being able to make good decisions in Marvel Champions is so much stronger than in Legendary, where Legendary is a typical deck building game. You try to buy the best card, but then sometimes it's just you just randomly getting stuff out of your mm. deck and you hope for cool combos just like every other deck building game but uh i really enjoy it but i definitely like marvel champions better yeah i told my daughter i said you do with it what you want out there you can take it to the game store out there because mm-hmm. there's i've got an unopened dark city i never got to 
Oh. I mean, last time I saw that was a pretty expensive, you know, thing to have. Got it a long time ago. So I said, you, you do with you what you want. But you know how you open a box and you see all the cards just jumbled together? Oh. And you're just like, close the box lid. It's uh, never mind. The problem with Legendary is their their first sets that they came up came out with, even other sets too. Like when they came in the thing, the way that they would package them, um, they would just slice the cards. It's like these are the common cards. And these are the, the less... I mean, they weren't actually commons or rares because there's no rarity in it. But they would just mix all the heroes and characters together. And they wouldn't even have anybody in distribution or in the factory, like, sort those out. So you get the pack and it's like, the first thing you have to do is sort for, like, an hour before you can play the game, before you get a new one, you know? It's crazy. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Kabuki Kid asks, what is Tony's favorite underrated game? And why does it involve gladiators in an arena? <laughs> I added that part in. But. No, you you knew I was going to go there, didn't you? Well, on a recent uh, Dice Tower podcast, they talked about Strike, and the new version is coming out. But what is probably one of my favorite underrated games? I don't know what underrated means, but it's a game... Just people aren't talking about it enough, or people don't think it's good enough, you know? They don't think it's good enough. Wow. Or they, they, they like rate it lowly for some reason? I don't know. Even you know, and really I really awesome. don't pay attention to the ratings. Yeah, I really don't. I, I, You're I don't like, I'm my own them. person. Absolutely. I mean, <laughs> from the standpoint of, I know what I enjoy. I know I like the Euro games. Um, and I'm trying to think just what's on my shelf. Um, the Bessier game, uh, Whistle Stop. Is that it? Mm. Did I get the name right? Yeah. You yeah. Know, I, I love that game. Absolutely love that game. I love playing that game. And, you know, maybe that's one that's one of my favorites as well. If, if we think about train games, I love my train games. And then I look at, you know, Champions of Midgard, enjoy Champions of Midgard. Mm. And, of course, Strike. I'm so excited for the new version. Cannot wait. So bummed Gen Con is canceled. Fun fact, the very first time I ever played Strike, Tony taught yes, me how to was. play. Yes, we had a big time, didn't we? Yep. And he taught me the thematic like relevance of everything in the game, how it's an extremely thematic game about mm-hmm. gladiators in this monumental arena. And you are battling it out over the, 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 basically the fate of the whole world. I think, you know, that's it. I mean, you are, you are battling for the leader of Rome or Greece or however you want to view it. I mean, shoot, let's, let's take it to, to the Jarls of the Viking hood. Maybe that's where we're at. I don't know. That arena can be any arena in the world. And you are sitting there trying to have your leader be the one that conquers all and yes i feel like i feel like if it wasn't as underrated it would have been on everybody's like top thematic game of the year you know just like (laughs) the theme is real strong (laughs) it's the whatever theme you want to make it (laughs) so yes uh but from games i mean you know you you get to play a lot more games than than i do and um gravwell Always look at Gravwell. Enjoy that. That you know, one of my first Gen Cons met Corey, and he was talking to me about it. And I, I thoroughly that that Gravwell is one of those games when I want to introduce um, card drafting, I'll put that out. And now that you know, the Broken Token has that small carry case for Gravwell, I, that just makes it even that more accessible. And I don't know if you remember Gravwell. Uh, I I didn't actually play it, but I remember what it is. You're trying to yeah. play the different cards to escape. Escape the escape it. Escape the void. Escape the black. Whatever you want to call it. Yeah. <laughs> so Fred asks, "What game do you wish had miniatures that doesn't?" Ooh. Mm, that's why do people want to ask tough questions, man? They're, they're trying to stump <laughs> the chump here. Oh my heavens! Um, what game do I wish that had miniatures? I'm going to have to think on that one a little bit as I quickly go through everything and say, hmm, hmm, miniatures. What game has any miniatures for? Nothing's jumping out to me. What's What about you? What game would jump out at you? For some reason, I, I don't know if this would be actually my pick because the game's so good as it is, it doesn't need miniatures. But I would love to see some awesome pirate miniatures in Forgotten Waters. Um, I don't mm. know if you've played that game yet, but it has like pirate sandies and the art's really good on it. But I would love to see some like really cool sculpted miniatures for that sort of thing, you know, cool pirate mm-hmm. miniatures. And, and I guess Roy, for me, I always look at it from the standpoint of the cost, the cost. You're, you're absolutely right. I say, 
I'm going to take Fred's question and reverse it. Mm-hmm. Would Arcadia Quest, Zombie Side, um, Black Plague, all those, if they didn't have miniatures and they just had standees and they were more accessible to people, would they be on the table more? You know what I'm saying from a cost standpoint? Mm-hmm. Do you really need the miniatures to make a game? For me, not, not so much. I mean, this is a guy who played Avalon Hill games or mm-hmm. APBA baseball, you know, where it was a card and two dice. You know, so I don't really need the miniatures, but I can see where it adds that thematic. I will say without the miniatures, you know, maybe you lose a little bit there on Arcadia Quest and Zombicide, mm-hmm. those kind of games. I agree. I mean, I, I'm i definitely someone who really enjoys like a game for the experience and the theme and being able to immerse yourself in the game. And like if I'm sitting around a table with my friends, I want to play something that looks cool and lets us have a good time even if we're playing with silly little plastic toy figures there's there's something about having these miniatures and moving them around the board that can actually make a game feel like more epic as you're playing it and you see all the different characters out there it's like oh man his guy's coming over here we gotta stop him here i don't know there's something about playing one of these giant simon games like blood rage and you see all the vikings and oh man he puts out the giant leviathan over there i better stay away from that water space you know (laughs) that sort of thing evokes more emo- emotion than like he put out the leviathan cube you know it's like i better watch out for the Vel- leviathan cube you know I yeah mean. yeah i agree with you but if it was a standee it would be a little bit better for you you know versus a cube the leviathan yes. standee so you you have the cardboard and it may be eh, but still you know it, do- it doesn't take from the quality of the game i i think i would lose stuff in immersion though okay uh, it's fair. It's an, uh, that's a good point, <laughs> sir. I, I mean, I look at all the games that I have on my shelf, and I'm thinking, wow, you know, a lot of my games are Euro-based economic-type games, so I'm not really sure. Well, let's let's jump over to um, the Terraforming Mars Kickstarter that's out right now. Mm-hmm. You know, you read about a lot of the debate. I don't really need the 3D printed, but just think how beautiful that board would look. Mm-hmm. You know? I mean, that stuff's all really for that person that, like, they know they love that game. Like, Terraforming Mars is one of their favorite games ever, and they just want a way to feel more like, oh, man, we're on Mars, we're putting these things out, we're making it look really cool, you know. Yes. And, and like, you know, one of my favorite all-time games, and I I did it on your, when you used to do it on Instagram, Mm -hmm. did your favorite game Fridays, I always had Pillars of the Earth. I tried Mm -hmm. to, even if it wasn't met in the topic, I tried to force Pillars of the Earth. (laughs) <laughs> so, so i don't need miniatures for pillars I, of the earth i definitely want to say that the pillars of the earth like things for favorite game friday have gone down dramatically so <laughs> i need to get I, I was reading your document the other day and i'm like is this still active i'm sure he's po- what? posting it I, i've been I doing this thing on... for like four and a half years <laughs> I know, well you know sometimes you you go back to it and i'm like I, I really need to start submitting stuff and i think i well, me and Mark Street both were sitting there trying to one up each other on how am I going to introduce this game? Yeah. You know? And then when he started video editing, I'm like, I'm out. <laughs> I'm, Mark ruined I'm, it for multiple people, I see. No, I was kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but I still, one of my favorites that you did was um, the Instagram was well, favorite outdoor game. Mm-hmm. And I did rock skipping. That was one of my favorite ones. You know, because I cause actually think about it. My favorite that is, I, I love you. Who doesn't pick up a rock and try to skip it across mm-hmm. a stream or across a lake? And it's, who gets the most? I think it's funny about Favorite Game Friday, like how many people overall it has like brought into the dice tower. Like, even Tom recognizes it. He's like, there's a lot of people that have come in and like started doing board game media just because I mean, a lot of people aren't super comfortable on camera sometimes, and like. Most people can hold up a game or not even hold up a game, just say the name of a game, you know, and people get more comfortable doing that. And they're like, well, I want to say more. I want to do more. So they start making their own podcast or making their own videos and stuff like that. It's been Mm -hmm. really cool to see this silly thing that I started years ago, like spawn so many different media people. It's been fun. Yeah, but I I look back at it and you'd have to do two on Instagram or two. I forget how long. Oh, yeah, it was was rough when I was doing it on Instagram back in the day. Because we started getting so many people, it wouldn't even fit because you can only do it a minute long. Exactly. And I was like, holy cow. Okay, okay, my number one or number two this week? Which one? (laughs) Because if I was on number two, I was like, man, I got shafted to the last one on number two. That's not right. No, I'm kidding. 
Oh, you got dude. you got to finish strong. You have to finish strong. That's how it works. Mm-hmm. <laughs> all right. Um, the, coo- the cookies are all gone. They were excellent, I might add, by the way. So we'll get a little something to drink here. <laughs> One Pit Wonder says, what game did you play as a kid th- that sticks with you, if any? So stick with me as in I still play or stick with me as I remember. Um, I would uh, say remember, with- I think, is what they're yeah, remember, I'm going. It's APBA baseball. Yeah. So for those of you who have, have no clue what I'm talking about, APBA baseball was basically some statisticians came together, and every year they would take uh, the baseball league, and they would come out with cards that were based on these six. I think it was six, or maybe been four, four huge stat sheets. And basically the whole concept of the game was you'd, you would field a team, you had the positions, the pitchers and everything, and you would roll uh, two dice. One would be the tens and one would be the ones column. And then you would look it up on their card and that number would then have you go over to a sheet. Imagine how hard this is and fiddly this is. And you would look at it and see what the result was. But if you played it enough and we played it a lot, mm-hmm. you, you didn't even have to look at the sheets. You didn't have to do anything. You just basically roll it. Oh, crud, that's a 14. You know, that's a base on balls. And then you'd mark it on the score sheet. Mm -hmm. And then you would go to the next and three outs. And whoever would have the most runs was the winner. Now, there was ways that you would – the pitchers uh, were various grades. And that would impact how it was done. Your infielding uh, had various rankings. And that would impact whether there were errors. You had speed on the players on whether or not they would steal bases. You had um, a bunt and sacrifice book, so you would actually have to use that type of knowledge. Like, should I bunt in this situation? Should I do a sac- try to make him sacrifice fly? So, APBA baseball in the South, we would go, and you know, it was too hot outside. We'd go out and we'd play wiffle ball for a little while, and then we'd come inside and we'd play two games of APBA baseball. But my my favorite recollection is learning about all the old players learning about teams, you know, and, and their stats and looking all that up because every year we would get a season, a year, uh, me and my friend and his father, we would c- gather around and we would break the teams apart and we would draft the players. Nice. So, and that was that whole thing. That's what has stuck with me. It was just that time, a very, very simple game back then, but it was something that uh, me and my friend could sit, play on the floor watch Wild Wild West, play APBA, (laughs) and pass the thing back and forth, and then go out and play wiffle ball, then come back in and play again. It was was very enjoyable. Um, Marty and I actually played it in the when we lived together in the apartment after we graduated from um, college, and I got the whole series, and we tried to play it, but it didn't stick, you know? We we just didn't have the time to sit down and play it. And I think back, and I'm like, I've always wanted to play it again. And then I think, Mm, no, there's just too much goodness out there. There's too many other things, you know. <laughs> but APBA baseball, an amazing game. How about you? Oh, for me. Um, I mean, my my dad and probably one of the most influential games is he taught us how to play uh, Gamma World, which is a role playing game. Mm. Back in the day, back when we were like twelve years old, we started playing Gamma World. And I think that's one of the reasons, like, playing role-playing games with my, my dad and a bunch of our, like, friends from, from church and school and stuff like that came together and played this game for... We basically had the same characters from, like, the age of 12 to, like, the age of 18. And we just played through this really long campaign um, where we did all sorts of different crazy stuff. And I still remember most of the stories. But I feel like a lot of that is the reason that I really enjoy these thematic games that have lots of theme and story in them. is just from playing those role-playing games. Yeah, and... So this is dating me. I bought, you know, Dungeons and Dragons when it first came out mm-hmm. back in the day and took it back because, well, anyway, couldn't find anybody <laughs> to play with. But, I, yeah. thought, I think it was funny that my dad taught us how to play Game World, which was this like post-apocalyptic D&D because he didn't want to teach us 
uh, D and D because he didn't want to tell all the other parents that he was playing D and D with all the kids, but he could play Game World with the kids. So like me and my friends, was. we were super into Lord of the Rings. So we're like, we should make a version of Game World, but it has like fantasy characters like Lord of the Rings. And we really? started like writing up stats. We're like dagger that should be like a D four, and then like a sword's like a D six, and we're like creating these stat lines for all these different fantasy races. But we didn't know that D and D existed. Like it's just so mm. so dumb because we were just kids, you know. But uh, it was but good memory. We we reverse we reverse engineered D and D from Game World basically. <laughs> well, there you go. See, but that was fun. That was part of the experience. That's what you enjoyed. Um, Trevor says, Trevor. Oh my goodness, Trevor. Um, I'm late, but hello, second best Tony. I know. I know this is not a Tony <laughs> Topper reference. This better not be a Tony Topper reference. It is. It is. He. Uh, I believe Trevor. How back how was Tony Topper the first best Tony? That's not true. Best Tony right oh, now. Oh, because because he is he is all about the exercise. He is amazing. No, Whatever. I, He's in California. You're in North Carolina. That should disqualify him there. You know. Oh North no. North Carolina Tony, represent. Tony. Yeah. You go. Well, you got to remember he used to be East Coast before he had to move out to the West Coast. I know. So, but, but Pennsylvania doesn't count. No, yeah, it does. Oh, I mean, hey, Tony Trevor. Topper is amazing. He and I, um, we were at Gen Con, and we got to, um, we finished up at the um, German restaurant, mm -hmm. and all these other slugs were going to Uber back. And Tony <laughs> and I decided we were just going to walk through Indianapolis. Mm -hmm. And that was very enjoyable. Very enjoyable time with Tony. And so we always get to, you know, we kid about the Tonys uh, at Gen Con when we get together. Mm -hmm. And also the fact that we dwarf our other co host. You know? There you go. Because he and I are both pretty tall. And then the tall well, team. I'll, yeah. So we won't, we won't go into poor uh, Jamie or Marty. <laughs> Just saying. Speaking of that, uh, Trevor, with all the hits here, Tony, how have you handled the pressure of propping up Marty for so long? Trevor's just oh, a troll. He's always a troll. It's he's funny. trouble, and that's fun. And, uh, I mean, kudos to my co-host. He does all the editing. You understand about editing. I have no clue. If I will tell you right now, if Marty ever says, I'm walking away from editing, that's it. We're done. Close the door. <laughs> um, he enjoys it, and I appreciate everything he does. And some of the things I do to him are, are he'll look at me after the show, and he'll say, why did you do that to me? Like one time I said, you know, that time Rodney said that game. You know, Taverns of Thief and Hall. And well, why don't you let Rodney do it? So he has to go find that from Rodney, cut it, and put it into our show. Okay? And I will drop things like that on him. And he puts up with my garbage all the time. And I, he's, he's a great friend. Love him to death. I mean, we've been friends since college, since 1985. So uh, prop up. He, he's the one that props me up. He goes out and he contacts the publishers. It's my job just to be a fool. <laughs> and I, I, I uphold that pretty well. I mean, I have very little um, input other than I will post the blog and I will contact various uh, the Kickstarters and try to maintain contact with the designers. So those are my tasks. But he does the lion's share of the work. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, I definitely, I definitely think it's awesome about you guys' podcast that you can tell that y'all have been friends for so long and you have all of these shared stories of like gaming through through time basically and like the journey you guys have taken together is is awesome well it, sometimes it's it's entertaining for us definitely on the show we don't know about the listeners but it's entertaining to us <laughs> yeah. plain and simple uh one pip wonder asks what's your favorite meal oh, oh and then also cool. asks was food discussed yet obviously food was already discussed come on we talked about rubs uh we talked <laughs> about grilling um so we'll, we'll start because um, meals we kind of come. So for breakfast, I really love a good omelet. Uh, mm -hmm. You cannot beat a good omelet. However, and I ask you, Roy, favorite Pop Tart? I think I'm just going to have to go with cinnamon. Well, brown sugar cinnamon. Yes. Okay. That's fair. That's also dessert. That can be a dessert. <laughs> By the way, it's just how sweet it is, which was one of our, our best. Um, uh, BGG Guild polls that I did. I haven't done a poll in a while. I need to get a poll out there. But I was one of my first polls, and it was amazing the response I got back on. <laughs> What's your favorite flavor of Pop Tart? Then we'll move to lunch. And I'm going to tell you right now for lunch, I will. I love having a grilled chicken salad sandwich. How about you? It's one of my favorite things. Mm, so good, so good. And then for dinner, I am I am a sucker for some baby back ribs. Woo! 
Mm, good barbecue. Baby back ribs. <laughs> that Any barbecue will do it, but baby back ribs, I really love those. And then the other dessert, it will always be banana pudding. Love banana pudding. There you go. But mm. with it, with a RC Cola and a Moon Pie on the side, right? That's that's running out the door, man. We're talking about <laughs> sitting down, enjoying it. Now, I will say my wife makes a killer, killer... Um, I mean, it's not hard to make strawberry shortcake, but mm-hmm. she does a special, um, the cake you put it on. And then Marty's wife, Vanessa, oh, man, the dessert she makes for game day, they will make you, oh, you gain five pounds just sitting there. It's just <laughs> unreal. She'll do these trifles. She'll do this one that has whipped cream, uh, brownies, and I think she puts a little, um, oh, good gosh, Butterfinger in there. That's so good. Or then she'll mm-hmm. follow it up with the strawberry trifle. Ooh, good eats. Good eats. Mm. <laughs> oh, and have you tried any Mountain Dew Zero lately? That's I a, that's actually, I've, I, I keep seeing it, but I haven't actually tried it. Now, do you like Mountain Dew? Yes. I try to stay away from it, but yes, I do like it. I, I can't imagine why. Roy Hyper. I just don't, I don't see a problem here. Well, I have been uh, drinking more uh, G Fuel, which, fun fact, I, I know I sent you guys a picture of the... Uh, the uh, moon pie flavored Jeep fuel or whatever. Which comes which... out tomorrow. Oh, is it actually coming out? Did y'all order some? No, they said this is your chance to get to it because you had to pre-order it. So oh, um, gotcha. June 24th, it comes out. I think you can order it tomorrow. I just want the tumbler that's in there. <sighs> I could care less about the G fuel. It just seems so crazy because G fuel is like a powdered energy drink and mm-hmm. moon pie flavor. I, I guess I've tried some pretty crazy flavors. I have bubblegum flavor in the kitchen, so I can't really complain about moon pie, you know? <laughs> But yeah, so yeah, Mountain Dew Zero, I understand staying away from it, but it's not as sugary as regular Mountain Dew. So I don't like diet. Mm. And then I, Mountain Dew is just a little too much for me now. So this Mountain Dew Zero, whoo, there, there you go. One thing I've noticed is I really like those Mountain Dew, uh, like the live wire ones, like the orange mm-hmm. flavored. They don't have those down here in Florida. It's only up there in North Carolina that I've seen. And oh, I, when just... I went back up to visit, I'm like, live wire. And I grabbed it. Grab, grab a few, <laughs> load them up into the car. Hey, we don't need that. Safety seat for that kid. Don't worry about <laughs> it. It's taking up too much room. Let's put some live wire over there. Did you ever have Surge from back in the day? W- yeah, once. They Just recently to... came out with it, so you can find yeah. Surge in gas stations now. So that's, uh, that's okay. I don't need to find Surge in no gas station. If, if you need... have Surge, it turns you to one of the mutants in Gamma World. So there you go. Okay, I, I, can, <laughs> I can believe that. You know, so what else we got back there? We got Dune, Runebound. Madness, Cosmic. Oh, Cosmic Encounter Duel's coming out. You got a chance to play that one yet? I actually, me and Tom have played it, and then I played it with Jason as well. Yeah, it's it's interesting. You you guys have played it, right? Yeah, we've played it. Uh, that'll be out, I think that's in our 202 episode mm-hmm. that we're planning for the, to talk about that. Maybe 203, I can't remember where, where we've got it. But yeah, we're definitely going to talk about that and enjoy that. I, I always enjoy the duel games, like the Seven Wonders duel, any type of it's, uh, game like that. It's crazy because Cosmic Encounter, when you think about it, you think of it as a big multiplayer game with all the negotiation and the craziness that goes on. And Cosmic Encounter Duel, there's no actual real negotiation in it at all. It's just you versus your opponent and trying to outthink them with cards and just massive craziness going on mm-hmm. all the time. <laughs> Yeah, and I like the speed of it. I, mm-hmm. As you know, negotiation is not one of my favorite uh, mechanics in a game because I'm like, just play the cards. Come on, <laughs> let's go, let's go, let's go, let's let's go. That's why our you know our buddy Mark Kell is keeps wants me to play. Was it Thief? Mm-hmm. He wants me to play that game just so I he wants. I don't know. I think he wants to. He's hurt always me with. he's always trying to wrangle people into a game of Thief. Like, come on, yeah, Mark. He's like, calm down. Yeah, he's, he's like, you want, you want, you need to play this because it's got negotiations. There's actually a mechanic or a token that makes you do negotiations. I'm like, oh, ooh, just, mm, I don't know if that's my style, but okay. I, I You're can like, deal with you that. realize I don't like social deduction for a reason. Yeah. And I don't know, everybody gives me a hard time about that. I know we did an episode uh, during the, the pandemic and we weren't getting to play where we, they ranked, um, Nate, Mark, and Marty um, ranked the games that they think make me the most grumpy. <laughs> and so they, they listed three games that you know like this game is number three on tony's grumpy chart um and then, then we had to discuss why it makes me grumpy and that's you know that's another carryover from the podcast of me being the grumpy gamer 
But do you find that when you play a game and you end up talking about it for 20 minutes, even if you didn't like it, then you wonder, why didn't I like it? I'm talking about it still. Yeah, I don't know. I, I Normally those games that are like that are the ones that I really enjoy. The ones that like stick with you after you're done playing. I, mm-hmm. I mean, that's one of the reasons I like thematic games so much, again, is the fact that it, when you're done, it's not just, oh, he had 25 points and he had 23 points and they had 26 points or whatever. It's like, remember that time when when Rob stabbed me in the back because this thing and then Mark Kale came in there and like took him out? And I don't know. It's just crazy. Like those giant games of Twilight Imperium where all sorts of epic battles happen and you remember those because it was just crazy the things that happened throughout the game. Yeah. And one of the things that they always know makes me grumpy is a long game. And that's why they... <laughs> Twilight Imperium, it's short, right? No. Yeah, oh, yeah. It, well, it can be. It can be if certain things line up. You know, and we talked about that. It was like, you know, if this happens, and, like we were playing, and then I was five hours into the game, and then suddenly it was over. Mm. Talk about a letdown. <laughs> I'm like, is that it? I'm, you You're mean, like, I I, I, I'm, I'm waiting for my other three hours. Where are they I'm, at? I'm, I'm waiting for a game. When's the game going to start? I've been here for five hours. What the heck? I mean, I never felt that way when we would play um, StarCraft. Mm. You know, Marty had a copy of StarCraft, and that was one of our first games. Little did I know how heavy it was, but I enjoyed the mess out of StarCraft. Mm. I always played Zerg. What's your favorite uh, faction in StarCraft? I haven't really played. I definitely didn't play the. I didn't play StarCraft much. I played what other things. I don't know. Other things? What other things I played are there? There is Age, no Age of thing. Wonders, which is like a fantasy 4X okay. game. Okay. But that's like pretty old. RTS, man. Did you you didn't play um oh good I, I just they just remastered. I didn't it. have I didn't have a good computer when these things were coming out, so you, you know. didn't need a good computer. You can play them now on probably the Nintendo Switch. <laughs> that would be I cool mean, if you could play StarCraft on that, but I don't think you can. Oh, God, what well, was the game that just came back out? I well, played a lot of, uh, what was the RTS I played? I played a lot of uh, Age of Empires. Age of it's, Empires. Okay. So. so you're all fantasy, man. You're you're about the fantasy. I never could get through all the Age of Empires um, scenarios, you yeah. know, because they were taking so long. I'm like, okay, I'm bored. Let's <laughs> move on. StarCraft, it was like, ooh, we're done. You weren't fast enough. We're done. I'm I just bored. like when you can make ballista towers and like line them all up and like make it so your opponents have to go through your ballista towers and they just get shot to death. There you go. Oh, yes. Yeah. Look at you with a tower defense game. <laughs> there you, you are, go. You are an early adopter of tower defense. Um, here's another question, which I think is good uh, for both of us. Uh, what hero slash scenario would you like to see in Marvel Champions in the future? Hmm. Mm. 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 go for it if you got one off the top of your head i I know for a fact for for the villain scenario i definitely want to see venom i i venom is one of my favorite like bad guys or i mean he's good guy sometimes depending on the comic but i really enjoy uh venom so it'd be really cool to see how the mechanics for that would work if there ended up being some weird thing where a symbiote took you over for a little bit i don't know it'd be kind of crazy yeah, I, that would be an. Uh, see, you were you're right there with me, man. Look at us. We we are just we are connected. We are so connected. Because I was thinking along either Venom or Carnage. Mm. You know? Yeah. Bring bring Venom in as the hero with Carnage as the villain, mm-hmm. and then you know somehow bring in the Spider Man feel to that or a spider the spider mm-hmm. cards. Well, how would that? Because you know, in, in those episodes they kind of teamed up. Mm-hmm. To take out Carnage, right? So, man, yeah, take out Cletus. See what we can do there. I, I, I'd, I'd really love to see for hero stuff, just like literally almost anything X Men. But I'd love to see Wolverine deck. I'd love to see Gambit deck. I'd love to see a lot of those different characters. Rogue deck. I don't know. I'm a really big fan of the X Men, and if they are, I mean, from what I've heard from like their Q and As and stuff like that, they talk about. Yeah, we're really big fans of the X-Men, and maybe that'll happen at some point. But I guess we'll see what mm-hmm. point that ends up happening. But uh, there's so many different characters in the Marvel Universe. I'll be really excited <laughs> once they get... Like, I really love the Avengers, and I love the Marvel Cinematic stuff, and I love those characters. But I'll be really excited once they get past that and start getting into more other stuff, you know? Because it'll be cool mm-hmm. to see what they can do with other crazy, interesting characters that are in Marvel. Right. And I guess I'm, I'm just so old school that I can't really think of any people past Iron Man, Superman, or the Hulk, 
you know, those were the ones I grew up with. I know they don't have the DC license, but I could think of a few DC characters I would love to see over here, but we'll wait till that happens. Okay. We just don't need it. But then I think how tainted that would become. You bring DC over. In chat, they're making fun saying Mr. Strange. And then Marty says against Mr. Doom. <laughs> I like that. I like that. <laughs> Mr. Strange versus Mr. Doom. I like that. <laughs> now has, has the Fantastic Four. There's a, you know, Fantastic Four. That'd be Have a lot of fun too. Yet? Silver Surfer, that'd be cool. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Versus Galactus. Yeah. I, I just, I, oh man, it'd be really cool to have like a giant Galactus. There's so many, there's so many good Marvel characters. That's why I'm, Fantasy Flight normally just runs and runs and runs with these LCGs, especially the cooperative ones. They haven't actually stopped doing a single cooperative one yet. They started with Lord of the Rings. They're still making Lord of the Rings, which is crazy to me. Um, so I'm excited to see the future of that game. So, yeah, and you're and you are talking to the wrong person for that comic book feel because I'll leave that to the other guy <laughs> there, Marty, because uh, I only know my Spider Man. I was helping a friend clean his house and um, this past weekend, and I pulled out these three shoe boxes underneath the bed from his childhood days, and he's my age. And I pull them out, and they're kind of heavy. I'm like, this can't be what I'm thinking they are. And sure enough, I open them up, and they were his comics. And I'm flipping through them, and I'm seeing Detective Comics. I'm seeing Amazing Spider-Man number 188, number 189. I'm like, I wonder if 200's in here. But I'm like, I can't keep looking at these. We're doing something, so take them to him and let him take a look at them. And everybody's like, are they worth something? I'm like, they're worth something, but they're probably worth more to him than you know some shopkeeper right now you know you need to hold on to that that childhood memory chat's making fun, fun of fact me for, chat's making fun of me for going yeah. too long on this thing so i guess i guess it's time to wrap it up um if people want to tell, learn, tell him that you, it's davis davis it's your fault this thing is ending no i'm just kidding no i look at it like this i mean i didn't expect anybody to be in the chat so this was just you and i having a good conversation we haven't called up <laughs> in a, quite some time so screw them. This is where we're at. Come on now, man. Don't make me get grumpy. Get off my lawn, people. Me and Roy, we're bonding here. So, <laughs> Awesome. So well, fun fact. Yeah, fun fact before we go and we get, get out of here. I will tell you, do you have an idea? In 1992, when I got married to my wife, what my anniversary, or not my anniversary, my wedding gift was from um, Marty. What, what do you think most people would give people for their wedding gifts? I'm guessing it was a booster box of Lord of the Rings TCG. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it was 92, dude. 92. Oh, I don't know. I got. He gave me a signed copy of Spider-Man 300 from McFarlane. Oh, there you go. And my wife's like, well, how's this a gift for us? I said, it's not. It's for me. It's for me. <laughs> so there you go. You're like, I might let Boy, you, thank you for having look me. at it. Yeah. Yes. Thank you for letting me come on. This has been a blast and a whole lot of fun. And I hope um, I didn't bring you down with this. Nah, it's, you're, you're good. Um, <laughs> if people want to learn more about rolling dice and taking names or want to figure out where they can find you guys podcast, where is it at? I hope Marty's in the chat and he'll post all that information. It's dice and names uh, at gmail.com. We're on Twitter, dice and names. We're on Instagram, dice and names. We're board game geek uh, guild number one, five, eight, nine. Appreciate anybody. Uh, coming over to the guild, signing up, help us out there. Uh, we love having conversations over there. They can go to rolling dice, taking names.com. I hope that's right. He gets on me. He had to sign up a whole URL because I kept screwing it up. <laughs> Roll dice, take names.com. I believe is right. I could type it in here, but you know what? Just type in rolling dice and taking names. People always ask us, where did you come up with that? There's an expression and you know, it, Roy, you know, you know, key, um, kicking butt and taking names. So we just said rolling dice and taking names. So that's where you can find us over there. And by all means, uh, I have my own Twitter and there's no sense following it because I don't tweet. <laughs> hey, sometimes you reply to stuff occasionally. I do. I do sometimes reply when I get there, uh, over there and we definitely have a Facebook page. Uh, look for rolling dice and taking names and you'll find us there. <laughs> 
Awesome. Well, I do want to remind everybody that the Board Game Geek Virtual Con, which I'm wearing the shirt for, woo, is Very starting nice tomorrow. Um, it's a collaboration with Board Game Geek and Dice Tower. So if you want to play some games virtually and need a way to meet up with people, make sure to check that out. Um, you can find that stuff all over Board Game Geek's website everywhere. There's tons of Virtual Con stuff there as well. And tomorrow we will be back with another. Um, it's a Dice Tower tonight with Crystal and Eric. So thanks so much for coming on, Tony. It's been a blast. Thank you, sir, for having me. Really do appreciate it. All right. Bye, everybody.